Hey guys, welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at my copy of Blood Rage. Um, so this game has been out for a while, but they somewhat recently did a new Kickstarter um, with a digital version of the game which I got. So let's see how everything fits in the box. So what's in the box you ask? Well, first off, obviously, we've got the rules of the game um, and I've got some extra sheets in there. Um, like the rules for the expansion and everything, um, some abbreviation of the rule book, and um, I made these, you can find them on BoardGameGeek if you like. These are cheat sheets for new players, because Blood Rage has some surprises if you've never played the game before. Um, and this will actually kind of warn you for stuff that you might not be expecting if you've never played the game before. For example, um, how the troll can just wipe out all your warriors in H1, um, and stuff like that. So anyways, then we have from the latest Kickstarter, we have the thick cardboard ones, which means that the, the box doesn't fully close. Um, actually, I can get the lid back so you can have a quick look if anybody's interested in that. So it's, yeah, that's kind of what you get from it. So there's a little bit of leeway, nothing that really bothers me. And um, it's still easy to take to places and travel with. So we got all of these thick cardboard uh, player mats and then uh, there's the Valhalla card. I didn't get the thick cardboard one because um, I'm using the play mat as you can see for most of my games and there's a, uh, What is this even the first age tracker and the second age and third age trackers again? The, the thin version because I'll probably use the play mat anyways The board is still in there, which I barely ever use but when we go on the road It's useful and then we get to the good stuff and this is what it looks like. Um, the insert that I'm using, I got from Thingiverse, made by somebody named Fafs Master. And um, that person did a really good job with it. I really like the insert, um, but I also felt it needed a couple of modifications. So ha let's have a quick look at it. Um, first of all, there's this little thingy here that's basically just there to keep the game board in place so that everything fits, uh, fits a little snugly there. So let's take that out. All right, um, and then I actually made one modification and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, if you get the version that Fab's Master made himself off of Thingiverse, you'll get this thing and this will hold the cards for the three ages. This will hold your um, pillaged villages um, and this will hold your um, pillage tokens. Now, I kind of felt that, um, you know, if you look at my version of the pillage village, um, insert and uh, the pillage tokens you'll see that this space is the same as that space so this would only fit eight of them and you would then use this one the, the, ni the ninth one you put it upside down which i felt just didn't look right so um i made a custom version myself for it um, which i like better but in general this worked pretty well um, the reason why i also made this thing which is basically a card hole holster which is cool because you can hold it upside down, the cards won't fall out, it fits really snugly. Um, so the reason why I made that is because I have all the cards for Blood Rage, including the fifth player expansion in here. Um, and if I did that with this, it would kind of pop out a little bit because they're also sleeved and um, I think they're premium sleeves from um, Mayhem um, or whatever the brand is. So, yeah, they fit really well in this. Like I said, you can hold it upside down. They come out really easily. Um, I, I guess I'll put a link for this online somewhere if people want to download it. And all the cards are in there. Um, fifth player expansion, even the, the, the Mystic cards are in there. And it all fits pretty well. Um, putting it back should be pretty easy as well. You just put it in there and there you go. So um, that's how that fits. So I just tossed this. I'm no longer using that. Um, so what else we've got? Um, so, well, this thing I didn't modify works really well. You got the cool horn in there, the raven, the first player token, and um, the doom track token, and your uh, province tokens for when they get burned by uh, Ragnarok. And um, then we get to the cool minis, obviously. So let's start with the clans, maybe. Um, so the clans are all pretty much the, the, the same setup. Um, Fab's Master made this this rail system, um, which means you can flip them upside down and all that kind of stuff. And a modification that I made was I added a little magnet to the boats, because I love neodymium magnets. The rare earth ones are strong and you can just snap them in there. It's 
it works upside down and all that kind of stuff as well. It's really satisfying to put them in there as well because then they snap. Um, for all the tokens, I actually, and let me show you, if you just toss everything out. Um, I got a little bag with a hole so that the air cap gets out easily. Um, and these are all painted as well. I, I just put some, um, some metallic paint on them to make them look good. And um, yeah, it, it, it just goes into a bag because it's easier for storage and it, it, it doesn't clang around in here. Um, I'm putting them in there, it goes pretty quickly as well. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick. And there you go. And as you can probably tell from the clip, I am pretty uh, specific of where I want everything. So that's how they all go. Um, I painted up the, I did some freehand on, on, on the, the sails of the ship so that they're easily distinguishable. I like how that looks as well with the magnet. All right, so now you're probably wondering what the, the minis look like up close. Um, they're all just painted tabletop ready. So um, this is what the Raven Clan looks like. Um, one of the cool things about my Raven Clan is that the shields all have different patterns in the back, which I like them. I actually got them from the TV show Vikings. Um, and this is what my um, Wolf Clan looks like. Then we've got the Serpent Clan. Um, the Serpent Clan actually has something really cool as well, because uh, I got my leader a Pokemon shield, because in Vikings there was a Pokemon shield, so I copied that. Then we've got the Bear Clan. Nothing too special there. Then we got the Ram Clan. Um, the Ram Clan, I, I painted a little bit lighter than I should, so they're really pale. Then uh, finally we've got the Stack Clan, which is my favorite clan, honestly. Um, so then we get to the red box, it's in that little insert. I typically never take these out when I'm playing. Um, and this is actually one of the first games I 3D printed an insert for, so like this one really went wrong. <laughs> but it's functional, it works, I don't care. Um, so anyways, again, the tarot cards are sleeved, fits in here well. I didn't feel like painting these because I like them better golden because everything else is painted. Um, I did, for Odin, it was annoying how he would just fall out of his chair and this guy is actually magic now because I used the magnet and you know, you can just take him out of the chair, put him back in, well, the magnet on his butt. <laughs> so yeah, works really well, convenient um, and pretty simple to do. Um, and then you might wonder which, what are those cards here? Well, oops, there are some extra little cards in here. So um, let's have a look at what these are all about. So I printed some, I, I basically copied the template of Blood Rage. I, I bought the font, it's uh, Circa Black and I think Eric Latin are two fonts that you need and then everything else you can pretty much create yourself if you're a little bit skilled with Photoshop or Illustrator. Um, so I made my own cards um, and there's the, there's a Dwarf Chieftain, um, so I'll show you guys real quick which ones that I've got. Um, so the first H ones are, um, there's a Dwarf Chieftain, which now counts as a leader because I felt that sculpt looked more like a leader. Um, so I like that better than having a Mountain Giant as a leader. Um, and he's called a Chieftain. Then there's uh, the Mountain Giantess, which now has the ability of the Dwarf Chieftain. So you don't really have to pay anything to put her on the board. Then um, I made an alternate one for the Elf Assassin, um, which is just a cool ability now. And she can kind of sneak into provinces that are already completely claimed, which is a cool little mechanic. Um, and then for the Mountain Giant, um, I only use this one for fifth player um, uh, games actually. So, or for six player games, because we have six clans and you can totally play Blood Rage with six people. So um, the Mountain Giant now, his strength is the value of your total axis which makes him really, really strong. But um, the other cards also give you some options to deal with him. Um, and then we've got the second age customs. We've got um, two cards first that are kind of uh, fixes, I guess. Um, first there's Valkyrie. Um, the regular Valkyrie is actually pretty decent, but it never gets picked in my group. So I made a custom one that I hope gets picked more. This one will give you glory for surviving units when you win a battle, which is kind of cool. Um, 
I need to test it a little bit more maybe, but whatever. Then there's uh, the Mystic Troll. So a lot of people said um, the, the, the Seer Troll or the Mystic Troll don't really get picked a lot in the third age. So I moved him to the second age. And um, one of the cool things is that they count as a Mystic now, as the name kind of implies. And a lot of people on Board Game Geek seem to like that. So that's what we're doing. I also made an alternate for the Seer Troll as well, in case we're not really playing with Mystics. Um, and this version of the Seer Troll lets you look at your opponent's um, hand before cards are played. Uh, whenever a battle is going on, which is kind of cool. Um, and then there's the Mystic Elf and the Mystic theme. So I got this one from Board Game Geek. This is a, an elf that um, either counts as a Mystic or it will have the strength of two warriors. So if you have warriors that um, a pair of two warriors counts up to six, which is one of the upgrades, like this guy would be worth six strength. So that makes them a lot stronger. Um, and then for the fourth age, I got four more. Um, the Volar Witch doesn't really get picked in my group much, so she got a minor buff. Um, she now only costs 2 Rage to purchase, but she still has the Strength of 3 Rage and the same ability. There's the Wolf Woman, who's actually really strong. Um, but in uh, this alternate version, you can actually bring her in as a bit of a surprise to a battle. Um, and you can kind of have another non-monster character morph into uh, a werewolf, so that's kind of cool and thematic. Then there's the Draugr, which gives you a third um, ship option, or a third age ship option, if you will. Um, you don't really want people who are playing Loki ship strategy pick this card, I guess. But at the same time, a lot of people will hate draft against that specific strategy if you've played the game a couple of times. So this is kind of nice in the third age. People have been helping the table by hate drafting somebody who is picking a Loki ship strategy can actually get a ship of their own and actually use the strategy in the third age. So... I like this one. Um, and then finally, there's a Dwarf Paragon, which is uh, the, the, the Dwarf with the, the, the axe I used for that one. And um, that character will just chop down really big, strong figures. So uh, they're really cool. And um, I kind of forgot to mention, so the idea is that the Draugr, the Dwarf Paragon, uh, or Dwarf Paragon, the, what's the other one? The Elf Assassin and the Mountain Giant with the axis strength are only used in five plus player games. So those are the extra cards that I got, and then I have a couple of um, other language cards that I can use if I want to make more customs. So anyways, that all goes in the red box, and it fits really neatly in there. Um, doesn't move around much. That's really cool. Um, which means that we get to the best part of this video, which is where we're going to look at the big monsters. Now, one of the cool things, and I'll actually try it, because I, again, this is part of the insert that I never take out of the box because I don't see why. But one of the cool things of this is that I can totally move them around and everything will stay into place because these are all um, connected to the floor of the box with neodymium um, rare earth magnets. So um, this is pretty much the same design I think as what Fab's Master used except that I added I think a rail here for Ymir. Um, and a rail here for um, these guys. <laughs> and then, I don't know if these rails were already there. I think they might have been. Um, but these are the ones, because I have the fifth player Kickstarter exclusives expansion, which was kind of expensive to track down. But, um, you know, I, I like to play chaotic Blood Rage games with six people, I guess. Um, and yeah, the only downside of this is that you kind of need to remember where everything goes. But I put some markings on the bottom. And um, I'll... Um, I'll Take them out and put them back in real quick so you can kind of see what they're supposed to, oops, what it's all supposed to look like when you put it together um, and how convenient it is to use the system. So, there we go. So, for access purposes, um, email is really the hardest one to get out. If somebody picks email, I need to remove, uh, well, since I'm tilting it a little bit, it's even harder. Because uh, usually um, Nidhogger is not even going to move. But I have to slide him out a little bit like this. And as you can tell, the mini will get some um, some erosion, I guess, here uh, from the sliding, which I really don't care about. Um, I'm not, per you know, all these minis, in case you haven't noticed yet, they're all just tabletop ready. I don't spend a whole bunch of time uh, painting them at competition standards, which I probably wouldn't even be able to do. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, everything else comes out pretty easily. It's just... Oops. Alright, you 
go. And then to put everything back into the box, it, it, it starts with Emer. So I would slide them underneath here, make sure that that fist goes down there. Um, and then I typically get the seer troll and I need to remember just the direction that they go in. And as you might be able to tell, I put some markings on there. I might put some cool stickers on there at some point, but honestly, at some point when you're putting this much work into storing your game, you just stop caring. <laughs> like it's just, ah, this is good enough. Um, so Nidhogger goes into the corner and yeah, he's like, I can shake it a little bit and everything and nothing's going to happen because these rare earth magnets are really awesome. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to put this down for a second so I can place this correctly. There we go. All right. And yeah, like um, now I'm holding it 90 degrees entirely and nothing's dropping. So um, just in case you were wondering, you know, the tilt is just so I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I'm put, as I'm putting everything back. But yeah, like, honestly, those magnets are probably the coolest thing of the entire insert experience. <laughs> um, and then, then these guys, I just like to put them um, in my order of preference. So I don't like the Axe Soldier of Hell that much. So that one goes at the bottom. Uh, then I don't like the X guy. And when I'm using the alternates, obviously, I'm just gonna pick whatever sculpt uh, matches the theme best, but there we go. Some serious geeking out. Um, oh yeah, I put them here. So Wolf Woman goes down here. She goes in the middle because that spirit picks up a little bit of space and then she goes to the bottom and that's all the monsters, glorious. All right, so then let's have a look at a close up of the monsters that I painted. So these are the monsters that you would just find in the core box if you don't have any Kickstarter stuff. So this is the fire giant, the frost giant, the sea serpent, and the troll. Um, these are some of the first big minis that I've ever painted. Um, and actually, I think for the fire giant and the troll, I pretty much just uh, put a mild base color on there. And it's just like a lot of wash, like just a ton of wash. Uh, they kind of look a little icky right now, I feel. But um, I'm still happy with what they look like overall. But I, I you can actually see how I improve painting. Um, Moving on then, we've got the Mountain Giant, which uh, I acquired on eBay because I really like the sculpt. And then from the new um, Blood Rage Digital Kickstarter, I also have the Mountain Giant Tess. I have Hilde um, which I've probably pronounced entirely wrong, and Garm, um, who has a blue and a red eye, which is kind of cool. So then also from the Blood Rage Digital Kickstarter, we've got Nidhogger, which is probably my favorite of them all. Um, at this point, I'm actually using an airbrush and everything. This was a Zenithal Prime, then I put some wash over it, and then I uh, manually started shading everything. Um, it looks pretty cool, I think. Then there's the, um, the Seer Troll, and there's Ymir. Um, and like, yeah, for the Seer Troll, I'm... I'm Literally just uh, blending everything at that point. I'm, I'm still learning how to do it, but it's it's a lot more complicated than what I used to do for the regular troll. Um, and Emir is um, pretty much entirely airbrushed, uh, with the exception of uh, the hair and some dry brushing. Um, so let's look at the smaller monsters then. Um, here we've got the Wolf Woman, uh, the Valkyrie, and the Vulgar Witch, um, painted at completely different times. Um, then we've got, uh, um, well, the other smaller monsters, uh, the two soldiers of hell, the two dwarf chieftain characters, and, um, the two elves, um, I don't know if they have any other names, now I'm thinking elf assassin and a mystic elf and everything, I think it's just dark elf or something. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, all the monsters and how I painted them. So, I'll just put that back in here, there we go. And then, um, well, this can pretty much be put however you like. Um, if you press the, you know, when the box is completely flush, everything is fine. If you start pulling a little bit on the box, like this thing might move a little bit around, but it's all good. So putting everything back. There we go. And voila. So that's everything that goes into my box of Blood Rage. Um, 
So let me put this back real quick. Um, I like to stack these kind of like do one horizontal and do one vertical, which kind of helps a little bit with keeping everything in place. And then we got all this stuff. But yeah, I mean, setting up the game is really, really quick. Um, and getting to any of the monsters is pretty quick as well. So there you go. That's what is in my copy of Blood Rage. Now you're probably thinking that this is the end of the video. Not really. Because um, there's one other thing that I like to use when I play Blood Rage. And that's this little guy. That's my Yggdrasil tree. Um, and the cool thing about the tree that I made with Chloe is that um, it actually has a hole in the bottom. And oh, it looks gross from the bottom. Um, and this fits one of those things that you can get from Amazon or Walmart or whatever. And then you can just put that in there and it actually lights up nicely. And the cool thing about that is it's a, it's a neat way to indicate when Yggdrasil has been pillaged or not. Um, if you want to make a tree like this yourself, um, I would recommend to make it a little bit smaller. But I, I, I honestly didn't care when I was making it. Um, it. It looks pretty cool and you can still get a whole bunch of units stores uh, Yggdrasil and, and you're absolutely fine. Um, but if you don't have the play mat, it definitely needs to be smaller. Uh, the foliage does get in the way of, I can't see where I'm standing, I can't see what's at my fingers right now. Um, but you know, you move around and it just adds to the 3D aspect of the game and it's really cool. So that concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we'll probably do a two player playthrough, boyfriend versus girlfriend of Blood Rage. And um, yeah, that'll be it. Thanks for watching.